we could uh, please stand for the color presentation of the colors. Details. Our team. Two. If you please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order. Arms. Colors down. If you please remain standing for our opening prayer by the Fire Department Chaplain, Reverend McCoy. Let's bow our heads, please. Lord, we pause and give thanks for those who serve, those who preserve life, giving of themselves, even sacrificing their lives for those entrusted to their care. We remember those who gave their lives on the night of the Strand Fire those who were injured. We count it an honor to follow them in a proud legacy of courage and of sacred duty fulfilled. May we, Lord, in our day and in the work required each day of us, serve you much as they did with a strength and a dedication matching theirs, so to honor you. Bless their families and our fire department. Bless all those who work to do your will. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Hooray! Rest! Thank you, Reverend. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome the families of those that the fallen, and those that were injured on March 10th, 1941. I'd also like to recognize the Honorable Robert Sullivan, our mayor, members of Local 144, active and retired, President Emeritus, William Paolo, President Emeritus Archibald Gormley, Brockton Fire Chief Brian Nardelli, retired Brockton Fire Chief Ken Galligan, retired Chief Richard Francis, retired Chief Mike Williams. I'd also like to welcome our fellow brothers and fire, firefighter, uh, sister firefighters throughout Massachusetts that have come here today, and all public safety personnel, and also welcome all the residents of the city of Brockton. I'd like to also recognize uh, some of our elected delegates, uh, Council Suna Castro, our city council uh, president, uh, Wynn Farwell, also Councilor at large, wasn't able to be here, but reached out. Um, Councilor David Texera also reached out. He was unable to make today's event. Uh, Councilor Jack Lally, and if I missed anybody that's not here from the council, my apologies. I'd also like to recognize Senator Mike Brady, uh, Rep. Jerry Cassie that's here, uh, Rep. Michelle Dubois, and Rep. Rita Mendez. If, like I said, if I missed anybody, I apologize. Uh, before I move further, I'd actually like to take a moment of silence and remember IFF Local 282, Buffalo, New York firefighter Jason Arno. Brother Arno was killed on March 1st in a four alarm fire in the Buffalo Theater District. Um, Jason was 37 years old. He leaves a wife, Sarah Elizabeth, and a daughter, Olivia. And 
Jason is being buried today. So if we could just take a moment of silence and remember Brother Arno. Thank you. I'd like to now invite up the Honorable Mayor Robert Sullivan. Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to uh, the City of Champions here at City Hall, the People's Building. Today is, uh, again, a day that we will always hold here in the City of Brock, and we always will remember the Brave 13. Uh, that is a legacy that we will continue to forge ahead in the decades and generations to come. I also want to just take a moment to thank everybody for uh, serving the city of Brockton. We have such brave men and women that protect and serve every single day. And if we think back to 1941, there was a fire at the Strand right outside here. And what did they do? They answered the call and they forged into that building and there was a collapse and 13 people lost their lives. 13 people didn't go home to their spouses. 13 parents didn't get to see their kids anymore. And so today, as the mayor of the city of Brockton and as a guy that grew up here, I just want to say thank you to those 13, but I also want to thank each and every one that currently serves. On Monday, we will be hiring 16 new firefighters, 16 new people that will be joining the brotherhood and sisterhood. 144 is the best local, not just in the Commonwealth, in the nation, and I mean that. The leadership of 144 and what the men and women do every day to protect and serve. I witnessed that firsthand. Last month, we all know there was a 10 alarm fire at Brockton Hospital. And it was a serious, serious incident. And when I was there, the Chief Nardelli called me and he was a hero that day. He was a leader like I've never seen. Brian stepped up because he is the chief. And he maneuvered that situation exceptionally, unbelievably. 11 different chiefs came that day to show support for Brian Nardelli. But it was also the men that I witnessed running into that fire. It was a bad, bad experience. And as a novice, as someone that's never had that in my fabric, I was proud to witness it. I was truly proud to witness it. Every single person that serves the Brockton Fire Department needs to be commended. When you put on that badge, you don't know if you're going to be making it home the next day. That's the call to service. You just don't know. And so in 1941, those 13 figured it was just going to be a simple situation. But unfortunately, it wasn't, and we all know what happened. But I just want to say that the Brockton Hospital fire is the same similar thing. I remember looking at Peter Reardon and, and Chris Gallant dripping with sweat. It was a hot fire. They were just focused on the charge, what they needed to do. And every single firefighter that was there that day was the same thing. So as mayor, I'm just so proud to stand here today to remember the Brave 13. But I also just want to say thank you to those that currently serve and those that have served, like an Archie Gormley or the chiefs that always come here. It is a brotherhood and a sisterhood, and that's a fact. Brockton's a special place, and we're better together. So today I say thank you, thank you, thank you to every firefighter that is serving, not just in the city of champions or the Commonwealth, but in our nation. God bless the 13, God bless each and every one of you, and always God bless the city of Brockton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd now like to invite up the Chief of the Department, Chief Nardelli. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here on such a monumental day, 82 years since we lost 13 of our own. I'd like to thank, obviously, all the dignitaries in the room, but also the working relationship and the thanks I have for Bill Hill and the Executive Board of Local 144. Um, we work hand in hand on a regular basis to make sure the department and the membership moves forward. And that's what it's all about. If you think back to 19, March 10th, 1941, I can only imagine what Chief Dickinson and the local did back then. They had to rebuild a department. Not something that we would ever want to have to do in the years now and in the years moving forward. Whenever I, when this day approaches, and we begin to think about reflecting and the thanks we have for what we have in the fire service. And we're thankful. I tell the new recruits all the time, it's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to serve your community. And it's surely a privilege to serve, to be able to wear the patch of the Brockton Fire Department on your shoulder. 
I think some of the things we have to be thankful for are what's come before us and put us where we are today. The family of William Owens here, who made our first piece of anthracite and etched it in stone that's in their rotunda right now, have come with us, and they're here today to, to memorialize this with us. We look at fires over the years, whether to, to the mayor said the Brockton Hospital fire or other multiple alarm fires we have in the city. The fire service, as much as it evolves, it stays the same. The men and women of the Brockton Fire Department come to work, and they take on that charge, and they move forward and they do what needs to be done to serve the residents of this city. There's a brotherhood and a sisterhood like I've never seen before. I get all over this state, and I'm always honored to be back here in Brockton, where my home is, but where I also have the home of the membership of this department and the leadership of Mayor Sullivan so that we are able to move this department forward. We reflect on, again, what fires are, what they've been, what they'll be in the future, and not a lot has changed, like I said. Has the dynamic of fire change, of fires growing faster than they were in the past from the materials of yesteryear to now? Absolutely. But as we do that, the greatest thing about the fire service is we always remember the ones that came before us, like our 13, whether it be Bartholomew Hurley at 45 years old who died in that horrific night and left a, his wife Ethel and two children in their formative teenage years. I would not want to be part of that and think of that situation where now those children are being raised without their father, but he gave his life for what we have here today. John Malcolm McNeil, he, he, was a, he, was, he had five children that had to be raised after his death. This is just to name a few, whether it be him, whether it be we had professional baseball players. I think today, the, a professional baseball player who was here at that time in O'Neill, and I think we have to think of what their lives were. They were firefighters, but they were family men. And they were men of sacrifice and honor and service to their community. So as we move forward, and we always say never forget, I think we always have to remember, and not always have to remember, but celebrate the lives in which they had, here serving the city in their home lives at home. So thank you each and every one of you for being here today. God bless each and every one of you, and see you later on. Thank you, Chief. So I'd like to thank everybody for being here for the 82nd anniversary of the Strand Memorial Fire, the Strand Theater Fire, excuse me. Um, there's many monuments that have been built over the years to recognize what happened that day. As the Chief had spoke, we had the anthracite for decades that we used as a memorial. And then outside, we built the outside memorial so that 24-7 there would be a memorial that recognized no matter what the weather was of what happened in 1941. And then we recently purchased the squad, the truck that actually drove firefighters and brought them down to the fire scene. But the biggest memorial and the living memorial is the mission that we take on each and every year to be here. And we don't do it alone. We do it together. Firefighters, the families, the citizens. And I want to thank you for being here. We remember those that gave their lives. We remember the days following the fire. We remember the children who lost their fathers, the wives who lost their husbands. We remember the sacrifice. We'll never forget. We'll always remember what happened here on this day in 1941, less than a block away. The dedication to duty, the dedication to one another, and the ultimate sacrifice that was given. So I thank you for being here. I'd like to also ask in your prayers today that you remember those defending freedom in our armed forces around the globe. And also remember the brother and sister firefighters, police officers, emergency personnel that are in service today. And please remember all those that have given the ultimate sacrifice when called upon. We will now take roll call. Details, Artin.
present off. Captain John F. Carroll, Ladder Company 3. Lieutenant Raymond A. Mitchell, Engine Company 4. Firefighter Matthew E. McGarry, Ladder Company 3. Firefighter Roy A. McCarrigan, Squad A. Firefighter Dennis P. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter William J. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter Daniel C. O'Brien, Squad A. Firefighter George A. Collins, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Frederick F. Kelly, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Martin E. Lipper, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Henry E. Sullivan, Engine Company 1. Firefighter John M. McNeil, Ladder Company 1. Firefighter Bartholomew Hurley, Ladder Company 1. I'd like to also recognize today uh, Chief Burrell. Uh, every year he would be at the Strand, and after his passing we would have his baseball hat in the seat where he sat. And this year we actually have two helmets in the front seat up front here. And we have the helmet of Chief Burrell, and we also have the helmet of Captain Carroll. So I'd just like to recognize Archie Gormley for getting those helmets and bringing them here today. We appreciate that. Thank you. And also, I'd like to recognize Donnie Burrell, Chief Burrell's son, who gave us the honor of allowing to have his helmet here today.
And of course, I'd like to thank the Brockton Fire Department Honor Guard, the Brockton Police Honor Guard, and the Pipes and Drums, and all that helped with the ceremony today. Thank you. And I'd like to recognize retired Chief Galligan. Every year he sets up in the rotunda the display of uh, what happened on March 10th. Um, so I want to thank him for making sure that's taken care of every year. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite up the fire chaplain, Father Matthew Westcott, for our closing prayer. I invite you to join me in prayer. Lord God, we gather with hearts full of memory, hearts full of gratitude. We thank you in a particular way for the honor, the courage, and the commitment of our fallen 13. Their legacy inspires generations. Their actions that night preserved life. We move forward confident, inspired by their example, and knowing that the path they blazed, other men and women now follow. Knowing and entrusting them all to you, may you bless all those who place themselves in harm's way for the safety of their brothers and sisters. Confident that we never truly lose those we return to you, we move forward inspired to be citizens worthy of the sacrifices made by our fallen 13 and by the men and women we honor today. We anticipate your continued blessings upon this, upon our city, upon our police and fire, and upon all those that reside in this city. We make this prayer in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. Immediately following the wreath laying ceremony, we invite everybody back to our Union Hall, back to Keating Hall, 80 Perkins Avenue, for uh, collation, and we'll be serving uh, breakfast there as well for everyone. It's actually hot breakfast. We got a brand new kitchen. It's all legal, so <laughs> it's nice. Like the chief said, moving forward. <laughs> and immediately following the ceremony, we'll have a uh, here inside the hall. We'll have a wreath laying ceremony outside. So I ask everybody to join us out there. So I'd ask now, can you please stand for the retreat of colors. Thank you, everyone.